Celtics Lab. Brought to you by Ice Picks and the Game Time app. Alrighty, welcome to the Celtics Lab podcast. Brought to you by Prize Picks, the exclusive fantasy basketball partner of CLNS Media Network, and by Game Time Tickets, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. What time is it? Game time. I'm Cameron Tepper Tobias. I'm your host. I'm joined by Alex Goldberg. I'm joined by Dr. Justin Quinn, and it is NBA 24-25 season eve. Uh, specifically, <laughs> apparently, right when the extension deadline is, because it's 5:03 on the East Coast, and all these extensions are coming in. So, per usual, what we'll do is we will do the news here to open the program, but um, we might miss a thing or two because it's 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 live, it's breaking, it's real. We're doing it live, and then in the second half of the program, the lab portion of the programming, what we're going to do is we are going to take a stock of the entire NBA. We're going to literally analyze the team's quote unquote stock. Uh, is this team up? Is this team down? Is it steady? Are we not really ready to make? An assertion. We'll do it quick, but a few teams will um, we'll get our hands a little dirty. So that's our agenda. We've got a couple other things to do, but mostly it's in the news. So before we get to that, Alex, how are things in Brooklyn? Things in Brooklyn are A-OK. This is one of the last kind of big warm days before we hopefully shift fully into fall mode. Um, but yeah, no complaints here. Went for a nice run. Excited to go to the Westbury Inn tomorrow on Flatbush Avenue and watch the Boston Celtics defeat the New York Knicks in a, the house of a bunch of sad Knicks fans. So that's that's going to be great. Uh, actually, I have a thought about that, but Dr. Quinn, how are you? <laughs> Not too bad. Uh, gearing up to cover the event that is going to be enjoyed by Alex. I'm a little jealous about that. Uh, but not jealous about getting to watch Celtics basketball that actually counts again as I'm sure you are too. Yeah, I'm pretty sick of covering things that aren't actually happening. Um, I went to Jalen Brown's birthday party last night, and maybe I'll talk about that. But on the subject of home openers, I was talking to Jeff Twist, legendary PR. I don't know what his exact title is, but anyone who knows anything about the NBA knows Jeff Twist is the best in the biz. And I was talking to his wife about, oh, yeah, you know, the game, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of emotion. I wonder if they'll be able to focus on the game. And Jeff informed us that of 17 uh, ring ceremony home openers or banner home openers or home openers after winning a title, the team is like 14 and 17 or something like that. So Mm -hmm. history is exceedingly on the Celtic side. I'm going to be honest, I don't remember at all what happened in 2008. Um, no, so, I mean, we're pulling from like the 60s and 70s here, but technically speaking, according to Jeff Twist, the Jeff Twist, uh, history's on the side of the Celtics. So we yeah, will I see. The last, the last time that I can remember that the team that won the title lost the home opener, I want to say it was like the Dallas Mavericks or something like that after they won the title, but it's been a while. I thought it was the Lakers after the bubble that might be after the bubble that might be right i don't think it matters quite frankly um <laughs> you pay a lot of money to see the banner go up not to see the third quarter of the nick celtics game frankly um to that end fans if you are going there's very strict instructions about when you need to be in your seat and i'd say look them up so i don't give you bad information but i know that there are strict <laughs> instructions anyways let's do the news um i'll carve out a little bit of time to talk about the jalen thing here in the news how's that um, the news for the Celtics, uh, the, the headline is that Lonnie Walker the fourth did not, as of yet, make the team. He was waived. He was on an Exhibit 10. We kind of expected this. And part of the reasoning there is if he did sign with the team proper, it would cost you know $14 million in salary and penalties for... I think the number's 11 I've seen out there. I've okay. done the math. It's not my bag, but still I've seen. It's more than they wanted to spend. It's a lot. Uh, yeah, that player. He uh, gets a bonus, a $75,000 bonus, um, if he ends up in Maine. Is that right, Dr. Quinn? $75,000 bonus if he ends up in Maine for 60 days, which would be around the amount of days you'd want to have him play to cut the tax hit on that $11 million total close to in half. Fairly reasonable number at that point. Yeah. So the long and the short of it is he could sign with any NBA rep team that wants him. I think the Knicks should sign him. Campaign is not a great backup guard and also uh, like gave a fake name to a cop and might have some legal troubles coming up. So um, I did not hear that. Wow. 
Yeah, I like campaign, but that's not a good thing to do. Uh, so Lonnie could end up in any moment, quite literally, with another NBA team, but he could also end up in Maine, uh, which would mean he could come back down to Boston and play here and there, and then eventually make his way onto the the proper NBA roster. So Lonnie, great job in camp, and we don't know yet uh, if it's Sayonara or see you later or whatnot, uh, which is to say, basically, we know what the roster is going to look like. It's Jordan Walsh is replacing O'Shea Brissett and Jaden Springer for now is replacing Svi Mikhailuk, which I just figured out how to pronounce. And no. now, he plays in U- now he plays in Utah. They'll keep an open roster spot almost definitely for the dual reason of flexibility slash to save a several million dollars. Um, we've talked about this, but as extensions are rolling in, Jalen Suggs just signed, Corey Crispert just signed, Jalen Green just signed, Trey Murphy just signed. So now we have some like new data. Um, quickly, what's our temperature on the CBA? We we kind of think it's really squeezing the middle class. I think Lonnie is a good example of this. Does, do these extensions that just came in, and you can rattle off some of the numbers if it's helpful, do they change your mind, Alex? Yeah, I mean, I think, so I guess I should clarify, by middle class, I'm not necessarily referring to, like, players that are, like, top 50-ish players. Yeah, like not Derek White. Yeah, exactly. And I think most of these extensions are in line with numbers for those guys. Like, the Jalen Suggs extension is a perfect example. That guy's making slightly more than Derek White uh, over the course of five years. Um, Jalen Suggs, you know, that's an all-NBA level defender and a starting point guard. He is a solidly kind of middle of the pack, good NBA player. The guys that I think are really getting squeezed by this are the role players, uh, end of bench guys who are talented enough to make NBA rosters, but will not make NBA rosters because of the financial implications of having to pay them what they're worth. And that's that's where I kind of take issue with the new CBA. You know, you look at like an O'Shea Brissett, a Lonnie Walker, a Markel Fultz, you know, what have you. These are all guys that are have shown that they are perfectly capable NBA rotation players. Like you can put them out there for 10, 12 minutes and they'll they'll do a fine job. Right now they're getting squeezed because um nobody wants to pay $9 million to say a Markel Fultz if the tax penalty for that player is going to be $18 million. And the way that the new CBA is currently structured, it's just really hard to fill out your bench with those kind of like low salary, um, kind of better than vet minimum guys, uh, unless they are on like rookie deals or team friendly extensions. That's just kind of the way that things are designed. So I, I do think some changes need to be made. And I think the chief thing that will help guys like Lonnie Walker out the most is expansion. Um, just the, the talent pool is too deep. Yeah, there's also some important implications of this lack of 15th roster spot being filled around the league quite often. And that is courtesy of one Keith Smith, who recently shared that if they go two seasons in a row, I believe, is the understanding where more than half the league has no 15th spot open or has a 15th spot open for more than half the season, uh, that that will end up costing the NBA teams, all of them, the third two-way player spot that was recently given to them. So this could change things in a way that would be really problematic for teams trying to juggle new talent, developing them, and then getting them into the pipeline without costing tons of money. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I, I think the problem here is, you know, there's going to be a lot more money coming into the league with the new TV deal, so maybe this water finds its level. But I think agents for guys who shouldn't have max level contracts, and, and Justin and I were talking about this, um, in a perfect world, they, the, the labor they provide is worth more than the money that they make, quite frankly. But when they're artificially limited to 35% or 30% of the cap, a guy like Aaron Gordon or like past his prime Bradley Beal makes way too much money. But they have the clout and the agent and the history to barter for and that. The timing. And the timing. And the timing. Yeah. That's a small part of it. And so I do wonder if, you know, five years from now, water will find its level and maybe teams will say to guys like that, hey, we can't pay you like that. Um, guys like Drew Holiday or. Porzingis, who you know make a ton of money, but not 
near max money, maybe that will open up some some spots. But there are just too many guys like Zach Levine. There's too many guys on max level contracts on bad teams or teams that don't historically pay into the tax that there's just not money right now. Uh, so it looks like the new CBA hurts, but we don't know. Anyways, uh, in terms of roster moves, so yeah, more extension deals could come through. We know that the following guys were cut by the Boston Celtics, but are likely to end up in Maine unless someone else offers them a deal. Jay Scrub, we knew that was coming. Uh, Hayson Ward, Ron Harper Jr., and Dimitro Skapinstev, who uh, Noah Talzel, friend of the pod, worked a story on for like two preseason games, and then now he's not on the team. So, <laughs> sorry, Noah. Anyways. A I like bit... him for what it's worth. Yeah, me too. He might be good. <laughs> me too. Um, we got a little bit of news about possible sale buzz. Nothing is... It's been reported, but nothing is. There's no ink on any paper that we know of. Mark Bezos, uh, Jeff Bezos' half brother, who is a rich man in and of himself, supposedly is interested. And minority owner Robert Hale, who is not, you know, among the uh, headline minority owners, um, is thinking about getting some more money involved or just like putting more of his money in and maybe pushing for you know, that scenario where the existing ownership group basically figures out how to buy out the grouse backs. We don't know that much more about that right now. And it's not worth like really speculating on, but it is interesting. There are two names. They're, they're like almost names that we had already, but they're like kind of different versions of that. If that makes sense. Uh, other piece of news, Stan Van Gundy says that the Celtics have the most, the best roster he's ever seen. Love that. Thanks, Stan. And, um, Today, North Washington Street Bridge, which is like the bridge that is between the West End and the North End near the Garden, was officially renamed after Bill Russell. Um, and Jalen Brown was there and spoke and the mayor was there and a long time coming. Lots of athletes in Boston have th- infrastructure named after them. Justin, you have a, an amazing thing here. Uh, go. Make the case. So... Bill deserves so much more than just a bridge. The bridge is a worthy nod to him. Don't get me wrong. I'm not downplaying it at all. But Logan Airport, who is he named after? Do you know? Do you either? Uh, I do know? because I'm a history teacher. Yeah, He's okay, like a World so War II know. guy or something. Not even World War II. Spanish-American War. One. War. Oh, Spanish holy crap. American okay, War. I don't care about that then. <laughs> yeah, he like was on a town council for a long time and was rich. So, I mean, like he did some things that were noteworthy a long time ago and that's great. But compared to what a one bill Russell has done for the community of Boston, I think it fails in comparison and it should be the bill Russell airport. In my opinion. Cool. Absolutely. I mean, unless the Russell family said, Hey, we have closer ties to San Francisco or elsewhere. And I wanted to go for that one. Great. But uh, I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, Okay. Cool. Um, let's do this. I'm going to do story time for like a minute or two, and then we'll hop into the lab. Anything else in the news that you guys wanted to uh, punctuate? I have a really quick question for both of you, and you can only respond with a uh, two-word answer. Um, of the Jalen Suggs, Corey Kispert, Jalen Green, and Trey Murphy extensions, which ones do you think is going to be the best value by the end of that extension? You can only mm-hmm. answer with their name. Trey Murphy for you, Justin. Well, you said two words. What if I get really creative? You just said a whole ton of words, man. You're you're disqualified. Okay, it's Kispert for me. I agree with both of you. I think those are the two best ones by far. Yeah, Suggs. Uh, I felt out our predictions, uh, Alex, today, and um, I'm really unsure of the magic because of their the point guard position. Um, we'll get into that. <laughs> we'll get into that. Yes, we will. Actually, we will. Anyways. Um, Justin is encouraging me to write about my trip to Jalen Brown's birthday party. So I'll also podcast about it. Uh, we, we've talked about this before. Like we're really lucky to do what we do. Uh, you do have to kind of pretend like it's not super duper cool. And at times it does feel normal, but also I, I kind of had an out of body experience doing this. Um, I reached out to 741. I'd like to learn more about the shoes and, I went back and forth with them a little bit and they said, by the way, why don't you come to Jalen's birthday party? We want to have some uh, media presence there. 741 is this Jalen Brown's new uh, retail company, performance company. I, I guess I don't know how they describe it, but the company that is making his shoes and the shirts and stuff that he's wearing. Um, 
I've done some stories with Jalen. I know some of the juice people, it wasn't like completely out of left field, but it was a, a surprise to me to, to get that invitation. So I got to go and yeah, it was super cool. Uh, I, it was a big enough place that I can't say for sure who was and wasn't there, but I saw most of the team. They were there. Um, I had a really special experience. I got to watch the WNBA finals with the coaching staff and Luke and then later Derek and uh, I know a thing or two about basketball, but holy smokes, they would say, oh, what set are they running? And then they would all pepper in like, oh, it's this set. Remember they ran that in Brooklyn that one time and blah, 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 blah. And then one of the players would come over and they'd be like, oh yeah, I, I really struggled with that part of it. I mean, just these guys are so phenomenally smart. Um, so that was really cool. I saw some uh, people who like work with Juice. <laughs> I talked to Jason about the Jordan brand story that, we did together. He didn't seem that it, he didn't, he wasn't as interested as I, as I was to talk about that. Um, like at all, uh, had a really nice the man talk about work when he's off the clock. Jeez. I'm a jerk. <laughs> sure. Right, let's go with that. Um, well, I talked to Jalen for a quick bit. That was really special. Alex, Luke really appreciated your, um, I'm going to N Nashville this weekend and Alex and Luke had the same recommendations for a pancake place. So kindred spirits, those two. Guy. Um, that's my guy, Luke Cornette. Shout out. Yeah. Um, I learned that uh, Lil Baby, Metro Boomin, and another rapper of great consequence was there. Um, but I forget who. Lloyd, the guy who sings Bedrock from 10 years ago, performed, wow. as did Ferg and Jalen Brown. They sang their song. Um, it was called Just Do It. Yeah. Uh, that was cute, Jalen. They made Jalen sing, and he got really shy really fast. Um, which is just a reminder that even big famous athletes get sh get shy like the rest of us. Uh, but then he warmed up, then he sang the song. That was kind of cool. And yeah, I'm really thankful to uh, Jalen and 741 and the people at the company that put it all together. Uh, and I have a few more stories off air, but that's as much as I guess I'll share here. I'll write a little bit more for Celtics Wire. So if you want a little bit more texture there, uh, be on the lookout for something on Celtics Wire. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Hey, sign up today. Get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Cook up hot takes with your friends and win real money this football season when you and your crew run your game on prize picks. This week on the Prize Picks Football Board, Justin Jefferson. For more than 83 and a half receiving yards, and Patrick Mahomes for less than 267.5 passing yards. Download the app today and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Again, download the app today and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks, run your game. All righty, let's hop into the lab. So we're doing NBA stock watch. The season starts tomorrow and for the rest of the league. It was a doubleheader tomorrow, right? There's two games on. Usually it's a doubleheader. I can't remember the yeah. game. But so the season starts tomorrow. Sure. Great. Yeah. And we're going to mostly rapid fire our way through the league and decide, is this team stock up right now? Is it down? Is it level? Or I wouldn't touch it. It's that confusing. So we have a few teams that we will spend more time on. Um, I'll, I'll, we'll kind of go in order here. So I'll start with Atlanta. And um, I think that their stock looks up. It's probably somewhere between steady or down. Could be fun. Make a decision. But, but I do wonder if Trey Young is on the team in 12 months. So for me, it's a stay away or a down. Yeah, I'm going to start, okay. I'm going to start the game with a uh, stay away. It's, it's too confusing. Which I don't know. Know. up, down, steady. That's it. Pick one. Move along. Down, up, down. It, it landed right. down. Okay, Justin, right. you're up. Boston, go. No, no. Uh, let's. I'll deliver one on these. It's real quick. Right. Uh, I good. second your down. We're never gonna, I'm gonna go, do this fast. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> we got it. Um, I'm gonna go up. I think that rebuilding the system around Trey Young and letting him be a truly heliocentric player is fine. I think Jalen Johnson is good. Uh, Hawks up for me. Justin? I've already called them down. I seconded you, so oh, looks, like looks like they're steady. 
All right, uh, Justin, you go first on Boston then. So Boston, there hasn't, so to be clear, this is all stuff since preseason. So we've known that KP is out. Lonnie being cut would have been nice, but he probably wouldn't have played. The sale appears to be starting to move. So maybe that's one thing that will not be hanging over the team throughout the entire season if we're lucky. So I would say ever so slightly that last bit makes the stock up. Alex? Uh, I'm going rock steady. Uh, this was the best team in the league last year. I think it's going to be the best team in the league this year. I don't think any of the changes that have happened in the offseason uh, are going to uh, alter that. I think they are the title favorite until proven otherwise. It's up for me. I think Jason and Jalen figured out who they are. I think they're going to get better. Uh, I think the league is in deep, deep doo-doo because they have two two-way wings who are just stepping into their prime and they look really pissed off for various reasons. So it's up for me for the Boston Celtics. Um, anything else on Boston? That was like an up, up, slight up? I, I mean, I think it's steady for me just because they're already the highest price stock to my mind. That's fair. I mean, how much cash does Apple have on hand right now? Like $3 trillion? You can keep, you can go past the moon. Uh, Brooklyn, <laughs> Alex, oh, fittingly enough, in Brooklyn, you get to go first on Brooklyn. Go. Stock is way down for me, fellas. Uh, I have yeah. spent some time looking at this team. Uh, I hear that there is buzz around Ben Simmons is back now. It's contract <laughs> year. Watch out. Uh, I couldn't be more down on this team. I think they're going to be one of the worst teams in the league. They might be the outright worst. Um, I think all of their good players like Nick Claxton uh, and, um, you know, kind of anybody who has any talent at all is going to be uh, getting moved in short order. The Nets have a very strong incentive to be bad this year. Uh, I think they're going to be abysmal. It's uh, for me. It's so down that you should buy the dip, because whether it's I, I, Cooper, yeah, whether it's Cooper Flag or one of these Rutgers kids, Brooklyn is not incompetent enough. Like they're not the Wizards or the Hornets. Like once they get one of these kids in their orbit, I think they'll turn it around and turn it around pretty quickly. So um. It's down for the 24-25 season, but uh, like GameStop, uh, I'd, I'd buy the dip. Justin? Same. Stock is, I'm going to just say the stock is up because that's what they're trying to do. This is not an accident, and it's going to benefit them. So if they can get even a fake second-round pick to get Ben Simmons out the door, even as just a trade exception, right? Yeah. That's a plus. That would be they might huge, actually, actually be able to pull that off now. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, I get to do Chicago first. They signed Taylor Horton T Tucker at the buzzer here. Lonzo is back, but I, it occurs to me that I don't understand how Lonzo and Giddy share the court together. So they don't because he's no longer there. Wait, no, he's yeah. Never mind. No, Take he's the there. Yeah. He's no, there. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty far. Uh, so I, that's confusing to me, uh, but maybe it's a trade chip. So the the correct answer is down. I wish I didn't think that though. Like I, it's a fun team, but there's just there's no way. Justin, I'm out. <laughs> you're, you're already you're just jumping the line. All right, Alex is down. Sorry. Justin, I, you're, I'm, you're up. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's steady, just because can they really get worse? Like really? I mean, yes. I suppose they can. Yeah, fair, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I I believe that this team can get worse. Uh, I couldn't be more out on Josh Giddy, guys. I just I. I don't think that guy is very good. I don't think he is very good as a number one option, uh, which I think they are kind of hoping he's going to be. Um, well, I don't, I, think, I, I don't think that's true. I mean, they have Levine, they have White, they have. Yeah, they have. I think they have um, next. Well, I, I'm I, out. they're just not bad enough. That's the problem. That's why it's steady. Like they're mm -hmm. not going anywhere. Yeah. Anyways, um, Justin, you get to start with Charlotte. So they've got Charles Lee. That's been the same, though, since the start of the preseason. Uh, I haven't really seen any substantive moves. Uh, we could say that the fact that Lonzo is playing with ankle braces might make him healthier, uh, but it's not enough for me. I need to actually see them be better. So for me, steady. Alex? Slight up for me. I like Charles Lee as an addition to this team, specifically because Charles Lee is going to have the Charlotte Hornets shooting a billion threes per game. They are not talented enough to win on their own merits. 
but they can steal games by just playing the margin game. Uh, I think this is a potential play-in team. I'm in. Uh, my heart says down, but every, every time I learn more about how Michael Jordan was as an owner, it's bad. And now that they're not there with them, um, Michael Jordan's not there. So maybe they have like more of a stable front office and stable ownership and maybe mm -hmm. they, they turn the page. Uh, so I think my, my answer's up, but I don't feel that in my bones. Uh, just quickly, quickly, quickly. Um, the ball boys get flagged for like, hey, they like invented their own shoes and then they got injured and everyone has said, uh, is Jalen Brown going to injure himself playing in his new shoes? I got to, I didn't wear them, but I got to handle the 741 Rover um, Black Moon shoes that are, that are coming out. They feel quite solid. They feel considered. They do not feel slapped together. I am not qualified to like make that decision, but I thought that was interesting. I meant to bring that up before. Um, all righty. Alex against Cleveland. Yep. Take it away. Uh, Cleveland Cavaliers are a steady stock for me. I think that the uh, addition of Kenny Atkinson is nice. Um, I The Max Drews injury to me is low key, not good for them. Uh, they really okay. need his shooting. Um, but I was pretty impressed by Evan Mobley in the playoffs last year. I think there's a chance that he's going to be headed for a breakout season. As you know, I am a big Donovan Mitchell fan. Um, I still think that this team doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I think they have to move uh, one of Allen or Garland, potentially. Um, mm -hmm. And for me, until they make what I think is going to be an inevitable move, um, I, I have them as a solid playoff team that can't get too much further. So that's steady for me. Same. I'm going to go up. Uh, I think having Allen back is helpful and interesting it's a puzzle and the Struce thing stinks but i think cleveland can be better than they were last year um so a slight up for me i've got detroit i, I just pulled up the depth chart because i'm curious i guess if you wanted to say up you're you're rooting for cade cunningham it's still a collection of players that doesn't make any sense but it's a collection of players that makes a little bit more sense um they did set the record for most consecutive losses last year so how could it not be up vis-a-vis um, -vis last year anyways? So it's like a logical up, but Detroit's going nowhere fast and I feel bad for him. So sorry, Kai, our, our good friend, Kai Carlin from the Detroit area, um, technically up, but maybe it should be down so they could get in the Cooper flag sweepstakes a little bit. Justin. I have to agree with you. I don't know what they're doing. It looks like they have a vague idea of how to rebuild the team, but they have like several more losing seasons to really overhaul that roster realistically. And I just don't see how they're going to do it. Uh, particularly, they look like they're trying to win now. They're trying to win now with Tobias Harris. So what's going on over there? Yeah. I think, that, I think it's steady is what I'll give them, but I think I'm actually being generous in that light. I mean, it could be steady and it could be a disaster is, is the problem. Uh, Alex? I think this is this is tough for me um, because I really do not like Tobias Harris on this team at all. Um, but for me, it, I think it's a slight up. The only reason I'm really going there is because um, I, I, am a, I am still holding some Jaden Ivey stock. I know it's in the dirt right now, but I think that guy's good. And I think that J.B. Bickerstaff, uh, doesn't hate him in the same way that Monty Williams does. <laughs> so uh, for me, it's a flight up. Sweet. We promised there would be teams we would like really chew the fat on. It's just the East has a bunch of boring teams. So we're getting there. Um, not a boring team, but I don't think we'll spend too much time on them. Justin, tell us about the Pacers. I mean, there hasn't been too much since the start of the offseason in Indiana that they've done to grab our attention. Uh, they should be healthier. Uh, they should be older. They should grow a little bit. So for me, I think I'm going to give them a slight up just because if, if Halliburton is healthier in the hamstring department this season, they'll probably be a pretty good team. They might even crack the top four. Yeah. And it's hard not to be, you know, supportive of a team that looks like it's poised to keep growing, even if they haven't really done anything of note to do that. Yeah. I guess I would take the position that they're up, but, close to hitting their ceiling. So in the current form, I would yeah, if we're, if we're still using the stock market analogy, you would like ride it a little bit longer and then sell high. Um, just as an another aside, do you know, guys know the Celtics are the third oldest team in the NBA? I think like, yes. Yeah. Knicks and who else? I just think maybe it's the Lakers, um, but just like, <laughs> the gravity of LeBron James. Um, 
yeah, I something to consider, I suppose. Alex, anything on the Pacers? I'm a little surprised by you guys. I'm pretty bullish on this team. Um, I think they're going to be good. I think that... Uh, well, we're not saying they're going to be bad. We're just saying they're they're not trending yeah. too much. Like, we know what they are. They're closer to steady I, I, than... I get ascendant. that. I think a full off season of Siakam is going to potentially make a substantial mm. difference for them. Sure. Um, and I also think that Andrew Nemhard is my current pick for most improved player. That guy's really good. He had a really good playoff run. And I think that him stepping into a bigger role as a locked in surefire starter to me, I'm, I'm really in on this Pacers team. Alex told me one of his goals this year was to be more level headed when discussing his hated Miami heat. So Alex, tell us about the Miami heat. Um, so I am going to try and be level headed uh, with regard to the Miami heat uh, for this upcoming season. Their stock is way down. I just don't see any way that it's up. Jimmy Butler is another year older. He doesn't have a contract extension. Uh, I think things could get a little grimy there. Um, I think that the Terry Rozier, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson trio of guys who are offensive spark plugs but can't stop anybody is going to get really dangerous mm-hmm. um, in a bad way for Miami fans this year. Um, Bam Adebayo is amazing. He's a really excellent basketball player. Um, he, he can't carry an offense and i think they are going to be asking him to do that for large swaths of this year i don't trust butler's health um i don't think this is a contender stock down um i'm taking up because last year like jimmy was dealing with off the court stuff and was injured and maybe bam shooting threes actually is this like revolutionary thing but similar to the pacers i think we know that they have a high ceiling so far be it for me to count out pat riley multiple years in a row now but up but only because it was so duty last year justin anything on miami i will say that if there is a real reason for them to be up this year it's going to be the big man they picked up in the draft low where who looks really interesting he can shoot the three he defends really well he seems like a very miami player yep. Uh, can give Bam the opportunity to move over to the four and explore being a bit more of an offensive player, which seems to be a thing. Uh, but I'm still not buying. I'm firmly with Alex. I think it's down. I don't think you can look at 35-year-old Jimmy in a contract year whose goals may not necessarily align with the rest of the teams as a surefire uh, up. So you could talk me into steady stock, but I think just based on the evidence, Probably down. Sure. All right. I've got the Bucks, and I, I spent all summer kind of trying to convince myself, well, it couldn't be that bad. And three things have happened quickly in the past, like say 10 days. First, Giannis basically said, if I don't, if we don't win, they'll probably trade me, which is come on. Doc Rivers said, I've never come up short in my life just because I don't win. Doesn't mean I, uh, I'm not meeting my goals. And Chris Middleton was ruled out for the season opener. So the stock of the Miami Bucks is the Miami Bucks is the Miami Bucks. The uh, Milwaukee Bucks is a Freudian slip there. Uh, that's a team in perhaps free fall. Uh, that's not good at all if you're a Bucks fan, uh, Alex. Um, it's steady for me. It's only steady. I, I agree with everything that you said there. Um, it's only steady for me because I truly do believe that Giannis is one of the three best basketball players on earth, and and a uniquely dominant force when he's on the court. And there's just going to be so many games that this team plays where it's like, Oh, we have Giannis. We win. We have just, we just have the best player tonight. Um, I think their floor is still roughly a 50 win team. That will be a nightmare to play in the playoffs as long as Giannis is on the court. Um, But I agree. I think, I think there's warning signs for sure. I I couldn't, disagree with anything either of you said. I tend to lean more with Cam in terms of the urgency of how potentially volatile this team could be, yet at the same time, they do now have a lot more time uh, with the Stars playing together. They've added some good names to the team. None of them are particularly known to be wing defenders, which is really the fatal flaw in this team. So if we're just talking about the regular season, I will give them steady stock uh, because we need to kind of see whether that more experience does anything, whether those new players actually help. But for now, steady stock. Uh, Justin, you get to kick things off with the Knicks. Oh, 
boy. So there's lots of good reasons to be excited mm-hmm. about the Knicks if you live in New York City and are a fan of that team. There's lots of reasons for the Celtics fans out there to be a little bit nervous about this team. But with Robinson, Mitchell Robinson confirmed to be out until the new year or so, they're dealing with a similar problem as the Celtics in terms of shuffling through big men. Uh, they just cut Landry Shamet, so their depth is thin on the wing. Precious Achua is going to miss two to four weeks uh, with a hamstring, so they're, they're going to be up against the wall in terms of depth in the front court to start the season. And, you know, they don't have the kind of players that Boston, for example, has. And we may increasingly see the importance of depth on how much of a contender you can actually be uh, because – player injuries are going to be a lot more impactful on teams now. And I think because of that, for that reason, I don't see how you can do less than the stock down. That's not to say they aren't a better team in general. Just recently, their stock is down. Yeah, Alex, what about you? Um, I think it's firmly stock up. I I think Carl Anthony Towns has looked really good in preseason. He's looked super comfortable, and I think his fit for this Knicks team makes a lot of sense uh, with what they're asking for them. I, I agree. I think the depth issue will be what hurts them in the long run, but they are also in a position where they are flexible enough that they can still make a couple of moves because Jalen Brunson is on a scam contract. Um, Brunson is really good. Towns is really good. I think they're going to be kind of a nightmare to play in the regular season. Um, to me, they're the clear favorite for the two seed in the East. Um, I think it's stock firmly up. Uh, I think it's one of those stocks that's up since last I don't know. I'm so confused. But the the Justin's is right. The depth is a disaster. Um, they are one turned ankle away from like maybe losing in the second round or the first round. Like it, it's really bad. The depth is really bad, and I don't know that they have the trades to to make it work. Um, they're going to ask guys like Josh Hart to do so much, and. Mikael Bridges is like reinventing his jump shot right now. So there's like, the, it, it's a volatile up. Um, so like, Low technically key, speaking, I just want to throw this because it wasn't on the rundown. I've heard rumbles about Josh Hart, not knowing what his role on this version of the team is, which is not something you want to have right before the season. Starts. I don't think they're rumbles. I think he said, maybe I should be coming off the bench. I don't know what my job is. Yeah. Yeah. He will be coming off the bench. I think he's going to be a very good bench player. And I think he will play crunch time minutes for them. Um, I think the reality is just that, you know, in the starting lineup, there's there's guys that are more talented and more expensive than him. That's not a knock on Josh Hart. I just think that right now it's pretty clear that his his role is being a super high utility, like high usage bench guy that comes in and uh, alters game flows with rebounding and defense. Let's talk about our friends over at Game Time. The basketball season is here. That means the roar of the crowd, the energy of a live game, the smells, the sounds, the moments. But getting in the door means finding the best seats at the best price. That's where game time comes in. And it's not just basketball. Game time is your spot for any live event. Plus, they have a new feature called Game Time Picks. That's a real game changer. I've been using game time all summer long whenever I want to head into town and catch a baseball game. And it's like having a personal assistant for finding tickets. Game time filters out all the fluff, just shows you incredible deals on great seats. That includes super deals that are way too good to pass up. It's really like getting a VIP experience, but for a regular price. Buying tickets with GameTime is a breeze. Just download the app today, pick your seats, and get checked out. The whole process is smooth, and I love that you can view your seats before you buy. I also appreciate that they take the guesswork out of buying tickets. You filter by price, you filter by section, you filter by seat view, you filter by what you want to filter by. And they offer things like the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, and more. It gives you peace of mind when you are getting ready to go to the game. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, go create an account, redeem the code CLNS, and save $20. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Alex, you get to start with Orlando. Orlando Magic stock Way up for me, fellas. Uh, I am all in on the Magic. I think they are going to win. I think they're going to win like 50 games. I think they're going to get the three seed. I like the Jalen Suggs extension. I think it's a little pricey, but I think, you know, young talent, you want to keep him. Cole Anthony, to me, is my six man of the year candidate heading into preseason. Um, 
I really like him as an offensive spark plug. And I'm just really in on Paolo. I have been since he was drafted. I think that that guy is really, really good at basketball and only getting better. I like the KCP edition. I think Franz Wagner had a historically bad shooting season last year and uh, yeah, he's going to level agree. off at a normal place. Uh, the Magic are way up. I think I'm super bullish on them. Yeah, I, I assume, Justin, you agree? Yeah. yeah it's, 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 it's so up. Uh, Philadelphia, it's technically up, but it's looking down at the moment. Um, so, like, since May and April, it's up. But the past few weeks... Uh, we're learning more and more that like Embiid is just like never going to play back to backs again. And maybe his health is in question right now. Paul George is dealing with a bone bruise. Uh, and Jared McCain had a really scary fall that caused a, a lung bruise is basic, basically how you would describe it. Um, so Philly is going to be there all season long if they can stay healthy. And if they can't, it'll be really bad, kind of like the Knicks. Um, so the stock is up in the long term, but steady or down as of late anything i missed about that i just think that uh maxi still has another level up to go um that guy is an excellent basketball player and i think that uh last year was a, a fun breakout season for him but this year he's going to have even more responsibility and even more opportunity to really prove himself as one of the elite point guards of the league. I also like their depth a lot. I think Caleb Martin, I think Koshan Yabuselli, I think uh, Andre Drummond is a great backup center. Like, I, I think that the Paul George injury, injury and the Embiid everything, that determines their playoff ceiling to me, um, whether those guys are healthy or not come, say, you know, June, uh, May, whatever, like, that that that's that's where the rubber meets the road. But I think this is going to be a better regular season team. I think that they are going to be annoyingly hard to play on a night to night basis. Stock up. I appreciate the nuance you just brought to that. I think the stock was you know they land the plane, uh, but the plane upon checking for the next flight, they have now realized they might need some significant repairs to keep that analogy terribly moving forward. So for me, stock down stock is down recently, but overall, like if you're looking at the whole arc of the season, I don't see how you could look at it as anything but up. So I'm just going to go down because the things that we are seeing, I think are most the most important reason for all of these moves is so they can pursue a title, the Joel Embiid. And based on what's happened recently, I think the stock has started to come down again. To the benefit of time, can I assume that Toronto is down for all three of us? Oh, it's and, down. <laughs> and Washington is – Brogdon is out indefinitely, and Sadiq Bay is out. Um, Washington is this, the most pathetic team in the NBA right now, so it couldn't be more down. It's down all the way. Let's get to the West. Right. Can we do the West in five minutes or less? I think we'll do so. our best. Uh, okay, you might lose me then. Uh, so Dallas, um, uh, it's down. Clay looks awful. Exum is out. Uh, the silver lining is that – Luca looks good. Kyrie hasn't caused any madness lately, and Derek Lively is very good. But it's down. I think I think I've been down on the Mavs all summer, and I think the preseason has made it worse, not better. What about you guys? Championship hangover is real, but Luca is truly amazing. It's steady for me. I'm going to go down just because you know. Players aging when they are a major part of what you did to try to get back to the finals, and you start to see signs of Clay shot not being there. I don't think you can ignore that. If that doesn't work, then this version of the team. They're down. so bad on defense. It's so it's, it's bad. Uh, Denver is down or steady. If you have made peace with this new roster, then it's steady. If you're still figuring it out, it's down. Does that sound about right? Down. I think it's steady just because Jokic is 50 wins. Like, no matter yeah. what happens, that guy wins 50 games every year. <laughs> I don't think that's enough for me, though. Just because, like, Murray, if they don't have Murray, they're not winning the title. They might not even make it very far in the postseason with the, with the players that they've lost. So, for me, it's down, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, Alex Manis last week or two weeks ago was basically telling us, look, Jokic was too tired to, to do it all in the spring, and there's no reason to think that's not going to happen again. So... We'll see. Uh, Golden State did not come to terms with an extension on Kaminga this afternoon. Did extend Moody. 
there's some volatility there for a team that's probably not that good. So for me, it's down. Um, yeah. Steady. But, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, but I feel like I'm being very generous in that regard. Sure. Um, uh, yeah. Houston is Houston's the most confusing team in the NBA. Um, probably up, but I, I still don't buy it. So uh, by, by the letter of the law, it's up, but I, I wouldn't touch it. What about you guys? Steady until they figure out what they're going to do with their depth because they have too many guys to pay, and it's going to they're going to start doing the the, the 2017-18 Celtics basically. Yeah. I will take a slight buy, slight up on Houston. Um, I think the West is too tough for them to really break out, but I think some of their young players have a chance to get better. I really like Osser Thompson. I think that guy is going to be. Is it Amen or Osser that's on there? It's one of the one of the two. whichever Thompson twin they have, is good. <laughs> and I think um, that is there's an opportunity for the young guys to continue developing into really good players. So slight buy for me. Uh, we can do the Clippers really quickly. That that's no stock is tanking worse than the Clippers in the entire NBA. I'm out. I've never been more out. I think they are going to blow it up in February. This team is cooked heading into this year. But the stadium looks nice. Uh, the Lakers. <laughs> Uh, Christian Wood is hurt. Jared Vanderbilt is hurt. They're old and they don't have depth. That's that stock is down. Stock is down. Sorry, LeBron. Uh, the retirement tour is going to be fun, but this is this is. Uh, he's going to do it in season twenty three, of course. It's a two year retirement tour. It's fine. <laughs> uh, Memphis. Vince Williams has a stress fracture, so he's out for a little bit. Jaw turned his ankle. Zach Eady. Uh, looks really good, and um, that point guard that everyone loves that I don't know his name, that seems fun. Uh, they've got cool new jerseys. Maybe Marcus Smart is healthy. That stock is up. That's like, going to be a fun team, healthy. even if it's not good enough. That's a fun yes. team. We are yep. so in on the Grizzlies this year. I think they're going to make the playoffs, and my one of my predictions for this upcoming season is that I think John Morant is headed right back to all NBA land. Um, I think that the Grizzlies are going to be a menace this year. Sick, love it. Minnesota, I think is up. I left that. I really liked that trade for them. Uh, what do you guys think? Take the trade up. down. I think uh, steady for me because I think that I I didn't love the trade, but I do love Anthony Edwards, and I think everything that that guy does seems to. It, it seems like he just gets better, like clockwork every year. Um, I can't be fully in because again, I didn't love the trade, but. Uh, for me, Edwards is enough to keep him steady. I would I would have it as stock rising if we were talking beyond this season because to the points you just yeah. made, I think for their future, whether Russ, whether whether Randall works out or not, I think they are now better positioned to become uh, his team. But I don't think this experiment is going to work. I think the, the way that this situation is going to resolve itself is they're either going to trade him. Uh, or they're just going to slog through the lost season while they, they retool the roster to, to fit the Anthony Edwards era. Check this out. Uh, I like the trade so much. I think that they just traded for the 2025 Sixth Man of the Year, Dante DiVincenzo. Ooh, nice. The New Orleans Pelicans. Um, don't touch it because it's about to look different. Justin, tell us why. <laughs> what, do you mean the Ingram stuff that's the, not the Ingram going on. of it all <laughs> the, yeah they're they're still trying to trade him they still need a big uh Trey Murphy is extended which is gonna you know take some pressure off but I think that it's never been clear that they're gonna move Ingram as soon as they possibly can the question is can they will any team out there actually want him on there he's not a bad player he's just a bad player for how much money he makes so that yeah. Yeah, see the conversation about the CBA before. My uh, take on the Pelicans is stock is down, but by the dip, maybe. As soon as they trade Brandon Ingram and put Trey Murphy into the starting lineup, that team is going to be a lot better really quickly. I wonder if CJ McCollum would be – I mean, it's good to have a vet around, but I'd like to see him elsewhere. He has to come off the bench. He, yeah. he can't be a starter anymore. Um, in the beginning of this game when I said there, there has to be a – don't touch it category. I was thinking of the Pelicans. That was that was what was inspiring that rule. Uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder, to the benefit of time, it's got to be up, up, up for all of us, even with Hartenstein's injury and Jalen Williams uh, as a hammy injury. That's up, up, up. I think it's uh, be patient. It's a two or three year project. 
they're, they're still very young, but they'll be okay. I think also without Hartenstein, it's they're, they're, they also have depth. They're they're another they're team, be fine. like Boston. Great coach too. Uh, Phoenix, Kevin Durant uh, playing hardball. New coach, new point guard, some more reasonable depth, but they were so disappointing last year. So yeah, Justin, I think just logically it's up because last year was so crappy for them. This is one of the most fascinating teams to me and one of the hardest to pin down as whether it's up, down, or middle. I am going up because I like Tyus Jones and I think they badly needed a point guard and because I think Mike Budenholzer's offense is a much better fit for this yeah. team's personnel than uh, Frank Vogel, uh, with apologies to Frank, who I think is a good coach, just had a roster that didn't, didn't work well with his uh, coaching style. I will say this is the most dangerous stock to buy up on because if things get bad for Phoenix, it's going to get really bad really quickly. And I think they are in severe danger of being a stock that come this time next year could be an absolute free fall. So buy, but be prepared to sell, baby. <laughs> I mean, they could sell, they could trade Booker and refill the cupboard pretty quick with that. Um, Portland, it's down. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to pull the electric on that one. I disagree completely. Whoa. Because they are looking at Tybal being out with a knee procedure, Time Lord being out for multiple weeks, uh, a sharp labral tear, but they have young guards and they have young bigs they need to develop if they're going to get better. And they weren't going to have an excuse to do that. Maybe one or two of them can actually earn a real role while some of these guys are sidelined that wouldn't have happened otherwise. So it's a very this slight. Is just, this, this is just in doing uh, fling and propaganda, by the way, for everyone at home uh, who doesn't see what's actually happening here. <laughs> I was going to um, say, why are you being I might so optimistic? Be guilty. Might so, be. This, is, uh, this is shameless Klingon propaganda. Stock is way down, Justin. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, Sacramento, Orlando Robinson has a sprain. They got DeMar DeRozan. Fox, they're, they're not sure about what the future with Fox looks like. Um, it's probably up because DeRozan is good, but I wouldn't touch it. Steady. I think, I think steady, potentially slight up for me. Um, I just... I don't know, man. I think the Kings kind of had a rough year from an injury standpoint and a consistency standpoint. Alex said, year. I don't care that you need to leave in five minutes. I'm riffing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, just, I think the Kings are better than they uh, came out last year. They kind of had a season from hell, and I think I think they're in a, a better spot. Sure. Uh, San Antonio's stock is up, but uh, wait two or three years. I mean, the, the kid is a, he's a kid. Don't put the yeah. world on his shoulders. But he's pretty damn good, and he might be defensive player of the year. <laughs> The um, vast cell injury is going to put a damper on some people's expectations of them being a play in team, which was probably a stretch to begin with, but they could make another move in the middle of the season. Stephen Castle. Yeah, He's good news for your boy uh, Castle. He's a Yukon kid, right? Yes, he is. Yeah. Um, and the Utah Jazz, um, I think they're going to be bad, but that's by design. Cooper Flag is going to look good in Utah Jazz yellow. I hope he likes beekeeping. Um, mm-hmm. All right, let me do post roll, and then we will give our two or four true contender. We have a, a few things after post roll. The Celtics Out Podcast brought to you by Price Picks, the exclusive fantasy basketball partner of the CLNS Media Network, and by Game Time Tickets, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Please like and subscribe to this podcast so you never miss any episodes, including the episode we're going to bring you after tomorrow night's game, uh, partially live from TD Garden. Already with the fact that I have to go to dinner in mind, let's do this. Uh, Four true contenders, basically your conference finalists. Justin, you get to go first, and then we'll we'll rotate who goes first for each prompt. Justin, hit it. Pacers, Celtics, whoa, and Thunder. Mm-hmm. Alex, uh, Boston Celtics will defeat the New York Knicks in the Eastern Conference Finals, and the Oklahoma City Thunder will defeat the Dallas Mavericks in the Western Conference Finals. Give me Celtics over Sixers and give me Timberwolves over Thunder. So Celtics Timberwolves finals, please. Four teams in the hunt from the lottery, but they don't know it yet. As in that stock's going south quick. Um, four teams each. Wow. <laughs> uh, Alex, you go first here. All right, my four lottery teams. Uh, these are these are 
pretty familiar. I don't think anything's going to be shocking. No, no, no. They're surprising lottery teams. All right, fine. I'll give you surprising-ish lottery teams. The Los Angeles Clippers have to be one. I think they're going to be one of the worst teams in the league this year. Um, I think the uh, Los Angeles Lakers are also going to be in the lottery. I don't think they're going to be in the high lottery, but I think they're going to be there. And, you know, everyone's gassing up the Houston Rockets, and I think they have some good long-term potential. I don't think it's coming together this year. I think they're a lottery team as well. Um, And I guess for my fourth, I will take the Chicago Bulls, who I think are going to be wretched. Sure. Uh, Justin, anyone you missed? Uh, I would actually go with, I think, the Hawks as well. I think there's actually a fairly decent chance that Philadelphia could have a really bad season with injury if Embiid is out and, you know, we see some typical uh, missed time, like historically speaking, in terms of his career uh, from PG-13. As far as the West goes, uh, I'm going to say the Lakers are pretty obvious for an unexpected one, almost to the point where we could say that they are expected, but I'll also say the Warriors. Wow. Um, Charlotte fucking sucks. They're not making the playoffs. <laughs> is but my answer. That's not unexpected. That's very expected. Uh, some, I mean, I feel like it's sexy right now to say they're going to make the plan. Uh, they're not. I think they're a playing team. I really do. Okay. <laughs> uh, biggest stock shift since the season ended, and then we are out of here. Um, so since May, who's up, who's down the most, uh, Dr. Quinn? Oh boy. Uh, probably. Hmm. I would have to say for me, just keep in mind, this is just the preseason. Those injuries, uh, that are taking place in New York, uh, and the extension of the Mitchell absence, I think has been, the biggest potential impact. So for me, they that has had the because initially, as much as I don't like the trade that they did for Cat for Minnesota, I think it worked out pretty well for the Knicks. But I just don't see what's happened since then as being particularly additive. Is the nicest way I could put it, and potentially really, 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 really risky for their season. Everything they did, Alex. Um, the clear answer for this: the Oklahoma City Thunder stock. Uh, couldn't be higher right now. I love the moves that they made in the offseason. I think they are going to rampage through the West. Um, and I think for stock down, listen, guys, the Clippers are going to be one of the worst teams in basketball this year. I, I And, you know, to if we want to limit it to preseason, fine. Then I still think the Thunder stock is way up because they were running over everyone in preseason. Um, the Washington Wizards are, I don't know how their stock could go lower, but they look like, uh, they, they look like a D3 team in preseason, but yeah, the Clippers, uh, full off season stock. I can't imagine somebody that's tanked harder. It's, it's brutal out there. I take it back. I'm changing my answer. The Clippers are the clear answer. <laughs> yeah. It's the Clippers and, and also Memphis is up and that's exciting. Um, alrighty. Uh, I gotta run. I gotta go to dinner. <laughs> so Okay. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode of the Celtics Lab Podcast. And next time we talk, we'll be talking about real, actual NBA basketball. How fun is that? Until then, we'll catch you later. Adios. Adios.